Hello everybody, it's Lila and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one that I have filmed once a very, very long time ago, back when I was first starting YouTube, and that video is so embarrassingly bad, and yet somehow it has over 800,000 views. So I see you, I see that this is something that needs to be talked about, that people wanna know more about, and so I am here to remake that video for you today. I'm gonna to be talking about a few different maternity clothing hacks that's going to save you money. I've been pregnant three times and I feel like with each pregnancy, I've had to relearn all this stuff. And as my style changes and evolves, I learn more and more and more. So I feel like I've got some good information to share with you today. I hope you find this useful. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. What is something that you've learned or have learned from someone else that has saved you money when dressing the bump? You might hear a little bit of construction in the background of this video. My husband is in the next room and he is putting together the nursery. He's putting the baseboards on the nursery, which is very exciting, but just FYI, you're gonna hear a little bit of noise. <laughs> Tip number one, invest in one to two pairs of good quality leggings slash biker shorts. Now I know it sounds like this completely contradicts the purpose of this entire video, but hear me out. I promise you this is gonna save you money. This is a lesson I've had to learn the hard way and this especially goes for any staple pieces in your wardrobe. Investing in quality pieces is a little more expensive, a little more scary, um, but as long as you take care of them, they're going to last way longer than something poor quality from a fast fashion brand. Take me for example. In my first pregnancy, I went out and bought leggings from Old Navy, maternity leggings. They worked great for the first couple of months, but then they started getting ratty, they started stretching, even got some holes in them. By the end of the pregnancy, I really couldn't wear them anymore. Come the second pregnancy, I decided to buy leggings from H&M this time, and same thing, except this time they were super see-through. But I stuck with them, I wore them for the pregnancy, and then by the end of the pregnancy, I had to throw them away again. Now, in my third pregnancy, I finally realized, let's just buy something that's really good quality. It's gonna be way more comfortable. It's going to last me way longer than anything I purchased in the past, and I'm supporting sustainable, uh, ethical businesses. Had I realized this in my very first pregnancy, I would have saved myself a lot of money because I would have been able to wear these pieces throughout all my pregnancies. And then afterwards, when I'm done having kids, I can probably still resell them for a decent price because they're still really good quality and people are always looking for stuff like that. Now I know it can be kind of scary to invest in something that's more expensive, especially if you have to order it online. So I'm gonna share with you a couple pairs that I personally really love that I've purchased for myself. So the first shop is Stork. I have a pair of leggings, maternity leggings and maternity bike shorts from them. And they are the most buttery soft things I've ever put on my body. They're incredibly comfortable. They're thick, they are not see-through, they're perfect. They've got lots of stretch to them, they're really comfortable, so that's one that I really highly recommend. Another is by the brand Belonky. This is actually what I'm wearing right now. I have the uh, maternity leggings in nude, and these are designed to just offer some more support, especially for their growing pregnant belly, which I think is really cool. These are a pair that I probably wouldn't wear with like a crop top. I'd want my butt to be covered when wearing these, although they are very opaque. But these are also perfect for wearing underneath dresses to prevent panty lines, to add some extra support. Like they're really, really nice. Everything that I mentioned in today's video, I'll also try and link in the description box as well. These good quality pieces I know are gonna last me a really long time. Like you can just tell the difference between these ones and the ones I've had in the past. These are gonna last me forever. Tip number two, wear dresses. <laughs> I was not a dress girl until I became pregnant and then I realized dresses are like the best thing ever. You obviously don't have to wear maternity specific dresses. In fact, I encourage you not to. You probably have dresses in your closet already that'll fit over the bump. You can wear anything stretchy like a bodycon style dress or I prefer the really nice loose and flowy ones. These are so cute, so flattering, especially if you are your biggest in summertime. Honestly, in the next couple of months, that's all I'm gonna be wearing is dresses. Dresses and skirts, they are the best and they can easily be thrifted as well. Tip number three, 
three, try on everything in your closet before storing it away. Don't give up on your closet right away. I know it's really tempting, especially in your first trimester when you start growing and into your second trimester. Your pants start to not fit anymore. It feels like nothing in your closet really fits anymore and you feel like you need a whole new wardrobe. And it's really discouraging when things just don't fit like they used to, but I promise you, almost all of your clothes can still be worn during pregnancy. You just have to learn to style it differently. So I found it really helpful to actually physically try on every piece and try it different ways, style it different ways. It's time consuming, it's exhausting to do this, but like, it's so helpful. And it's such a huge money saver because you can actually reuse clothes and not have to buy so many new ones. Things like crop tops or even regular shirts that won't be able to stretch over the belly once you get bigger, those can still be worn paired with like high-waisted pants, skirts, uh, even worn over top of dresses as well. Tops are the easiest because they can really be worn throughout all stages of your changing body. You can tie them up, you can tuck them in under your bra. Another great way to wear them is layering them. So underneath dresses, underneath jumpers, over top of them, like you can do so many things. You do not need to get rid of any of your shirts. Anything with stretch and length is going to last you for most of your pregnancy. So shirts, tees, tanks, sweaters, bodycon style dresses, anything that stretches enough. Low rise pants are awesome for pregnancy, especially if you're in that stage of pregnancy where you feel like having something touching your belly just kind of bothers you. That's why I was in the first trimester. I didn't want anything touching my belly, so I really resorted a lot to low-rise pants. And I already had some of those in my closet, and the, you can continue to wear those as you get bigger. Obviously paired with like a longer sweater, longer t-shirt, something like that. Also things like stretchy jumpers or overalls that I've had in my closet since before pregnancy have become a staple in my maternity wardrobe. Number four, shop your partner's closet. I mean, it does depend on the size difference between the two of you, but wearing something like an oversized t-shirt with a pair of biker shorts is a really great casual look that will last you throughout the whole pregnancy. You could almost like double your clothing options just by looking in your partner's closet. Tip number five, don't buy maternity clothes. Shop one to two sizes up in regular clothes instead. If you buy maternity specific clothing, I'm talking like those ruched dresses, those ruched t-shirts and tanks and maternity pants, if you buy those, you can't wear them after pregnancy. You can really only wear them during pregnancy. And if you know it's gonna be a staple in your wardrobe, like by all means, go invest. But what I have found I actually prefer is shopping regular clothing in one to two sizes bigger. So for example, the t-shirt I'm wearing today, this is one of my new merch t-shirts that I just launched. I'll have my merch website linked down below for you to go and take a look, but I've been wearing this constantly. And normally I would be a size small, but I decided to get all of the t-shirts, the hoodies, the sweaters in a size large instead so that I could wear it during my pregnancy. And then I can also go for that really cute, like oversized casual look after pregnancy. So the same thing goes for tops, for sweaters, for button-ups, for dresses, skirts, even pants. I've done this. I've gotten high-waisted pants in like a number of sizes larger, and then I can still wear them during pregnancy if I want to. Uh, you can do this with pants, shorts, anything. Just shop a size up. And then you still have those items that you can wear postpartum as well. Whereas if you were to buy all new maternity clothing, you'd have to store those away for the next pregnancy or donate them if you're done having kids and buy a whole new wardrobe all over again. Another example is this sweat set that I have had since before I was pregnant. I wore it then, I can still wear it now. It's going to last me to the end of my pregnancy. It's stretchy, it's comfy. It's one of those pieces that I can wear throughout all stages of my changing body. Tip number six, don't shop new thrift instead. This is obviously the most affordable and sustainable option and there are always maternity clothing items at the thrift store. You might just have to do some digging to find the good ones in there, but I have found a number of maternity pants from there. For me personally, I don't love maternity pants, but they can be a lifesaver on occasion. So it's something I wouldn't want to invest in, but I am happy to thrift it because I know it's not gonna get a ton of wear and it'll probably last longer that way. But even things that aren't maternity, like I said, you can shop one to two sizes up at the thrift store, which is what I've been doing. I've been shopping at the thrift store for most of my maternity clothing or clothing in general, and it just, 
it's the best option because it's so much cheaper, so much more bang for your buck. And my last tip, tip number seven, is keep your outfits simple, keep them basic, and then jazz them up with accessories. Learning to dress the bump is going to take some time and practice, but what I've learned for myself is that just keeping things simple has saved me money, first of all, because I don't have to go and buy a bunch of different things. Um, I have a very basic, uh, small, minimal wardrobe. And then I can easily jazz up the outfits with accessories and make it look completely different and like an actual nice put together outfit. My go-to outfits are biker shorts and a big t-shirt or jeans and a sweater or a simple dress. And then I can jazz it up with like a hat, with jewelry, with different shoes, with jackets, with things that I already own that I'm not going to grow out of. That's the nice thing about accessories is that you can wear them whenever. You don't have to only wear them during pregnancy or postpartum or whatever. You can wear them throughout all stages of your changing body. That is the easiest and most affordable way to create a cute look on a small wardrobe. Actually, you know what? I have an eighth tip I'm gonna throw in for you and this is something I can't actually demonstrate because all the jeans that I wore uh, pre-pregnancy were high-waisted and really just <laughs> doesn't work this way. If you have low-waisted jeans or if you thrift low-waisted jeans, you can easily make those last throughout your entire pregnancy just by using the hair tie hack. I'm gonna see if I can find a picture or a video example that I can link for you. But basically you take a hair tie, you wrap it around the button and thread it through the loop on the other side. Then take the hair tie and wrap it back around and loop it around the uh, button. It just creates more stretch and allows you to actually wear regular low-waisted jeans throughout your whole pregnancy. So if you own low-waisted jeans, there you go. You don't have to buy new jeans at all. Or you might be able to easily thrift a pair of low-waisted jeans from the thrift store as well. And the same goes for any pair of pants or shorts that have a button closure. You can just use the hair tie trick and it works wonders. I have done this before, but currently I don't have any pants like that. I believe that is everything I had to share with you. I hope you found this useful. I really hope this helps give you some inspiration and some ideas of how to spice up your maternity wardrobe without breaking the bank, without spending all that extra money. Because I know, I get it. It's hard to dress the bump, especially when you're trying to do it in an affordable way on a budget. But there is always a solution and so I hope these help. Again, leave your tips and tricks in the comments below and if you are new here, consider subscribing and following along. This baby is going to be born sometime end of June, early July. The due date is July 11th and there's lots of exciting pregnancy and newborn content coming your way. So please subscribe, hit the like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!